capability in China as being, you know, a bit like sort of perhaps gymnastics. They're, they're, they're sort of they're, they're taken perhaps out of this. Well, they're they're allowed to perhaps take snooker as a as a, as a class. Yeah. Perhaps they're getting some. To, I don't exactly know how it works, but I, tend, I get the feeling that anybody who's showing ability is being helped. Yeah. Right, right, right. Whereas over here, you're on your own. Any, any young kid is. He needs help from his parents or whatever. So and there's nowhere in England that, that's um, doing that at school level. So. But you said you, you don't really are into coaching or something like that. Well, coaching is a very strange thing because um, you. you uh, I mean, to, to some degree, coaching is about keeping people's enthusiasm. I'm not so sure there's a right and wrong way to play. Everybody has their own style, really, within a certain parameter. So I, I'm not sure. Coach, coaches can sometimes hurt players. Or uh -huh. Coaches can ruin, ruin players as well as they can help. So you, you have to be very careful. And if you have if you have a sort of national coaching scheme of anything, um, there will be people in it that are not that shouldn't really be in it. Then you will have other people that should be. And it's not easy, and it becomes sometimes it becomes who you know and not what you know. So this is a problem for all coaching, um, whether it be tennis, golf. In a top class level, sometimes you get the wrong people in for the best jobs. So I don't know. But, but as a professional player, I can help certain good players to improve. I may not be able to help somebody who was rubbish, because perhaps they're always going to be rubbish anyway. Uh, how do you see yourself as a coach? Uh, of course, you're, you're you're still playing as a top professional. I have no I have no uh, I have no coaching um, uh, aspirations, or, but I just thought it would be a nice thing to do tomorrow to come over and if there's any snooker fans to perhaps and if they had any questions to um, that perhaps I could help them. And it's actually I wrote a, like most players I wrote a book years and years ago on how to play and I think oh it was not it was it was okay but it wasn't that great and I could do a better job but since the internet has come along I decided that perhaps it would be better to write a sort of blog so I, I, I sort of got a MySpace page up, and, but nobody can find it at the moment so, so it's quite good I haven't yet asked me any questions but I, I've, I've written sort of two articles on there so I yep. think this might be a better way to go now. So do you feel like uh, you're giving back to the community of uh, snooker uh, that way? Do you feel that it little, gives you uh, something, you know? Sometimes it's good to talk about technique and that because it reinforces it yourself. It, it, it can actually help you to, to do that. And Terry Griffiths enjoyed coaching for that reason. Um, but I just thought... Um, I just thought it would be... Um, a nice thing to do over here as a, as a sort of because to, to, for this evening it's going to be over like that and then if I fly out fly out the next morning I'll, I've been in Finland for one day and it's I thought it might be fun just to do so I, I've not done it before so I don't know what's going to happen but so hopefully we'll enjoy it uh, I would like to ask about the final of 85. Uh, oh, it was 25 years ago nearly. <laughs> <laughs> so you remember that one <laughs> I don't remember much about it so the, 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 the World Championship is the last event of the season. It, it, it always has been. So I, I lost that final and had to wait throughout the whole of the summer to, be, to jump back on the bicycle um, until the next tournament. So I had a long time to suffer until I could get rid of the ghosts and the demons. So um, I remember it was a bad summer. Uh, yeah, mentally a bad, because uh, everybody was talking about it, so it was a bad summer. But um, as soon as the next season started, that more or less was forgotten. And then I just got back on the, and, and played the game. Now I look at the World Championship final, and um, once again I think it's the best of 35 match, but it's, a sh it's now effectively a shorter, a shorter match. The frames are over like that. The frames are over in 15, 20 minutes. They're not quicker, so I think um, there, is a, there is a little bit more luck in the game in, in one way because because the players are better, small small differences can matter a lot more. And so one, if one player just gets one little bit of luck, 
even even in a best of 17 match, it can it can destroy the other guy. Mm -hmm. Whereas perhaps in the 80s, this, this one piece of luck was not so important. So now I look at the final and think it's even the best player is not guaranteed to win. So there's a bit more luck involved in the game. You, you took a shot at the pool playing. How do you feel that it infected uh, your way of playing snooker or the mentality of playing snooker? Um, I, I didn't take a shot at playing pool. What happened was, um, no, no, you, you can, un yeah, I, I can understand how you, you, how you would think this, but well, we see, of course, what we see is the Europe versus uh, yeah. America. You know, what happened was. Um, the only tournaments I ever played in were the ones that were organised by Barry Hearn through Matchroom Sports that were shown on Sky and I don't know what they were shown on over yeah. So um, when, when, when the UK started to show Paul, they needed some snooker players to get people to watch. So myself and Jimmy White were the two that we that were used. And me because it was my management. Maybe Mark Williams also. 2002. Once, yeah, once, yeah, once he played. Um, so so I played in it, enjoyed enjoyed it for fun, no pressure, just fun, yeah. And the Moscone Cup was fun. Yeah? I didn't, I didn't, I never practiced the game. All I did was turn up to play in the games. And I played some very good players and, and enjoyed it and watched the likes of Ephraim Reyes and. Um, and uh, Earl Strickland, I thought, what, a, what, what great players they are. Appreciated their abilities. Tried to, tried to do, as, tried to do as well as I could do, but never had any aspirations to play any more than. So what's happened in the last two or three years? The snooker events have clashed with the pool events, it so is. I cannot play in them. Yeah. But if, if I could, I, I would only play in them for fun, not not to try and improve, because I could never compete. I think the game of snooker has changed. You have to be more aggressive anyway. So I think, as a player now, you have to you have to play more attacking, even if you don't want to. So I don't think I've changed as a snooker player, other than changing how I've played against the new the new breed of player. But playing pool, I, I, I don't really think it's any different. Under pressure, you've got to get the ball in the pocket under pressure with the crowd and the television cameras watching. I, I actually felt it was good practice for snooker events because it's still balls and cues under pressure. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think, it's not a different way of playing. You, know, you get down to play the shot and it's a ball, a, a, another ball and a pocket. Yes, there's different angles and different, you know, you know the, the different, the, the reaction, yes. And, and the different positional play as well, yes. It, it made me appreciate um, uh, the difference between Paul and Snooker. It made me appreciate how good the pool players were because because it's easy to say, oh, Paul's an easy game. Yeah. Uh, but when you see, you know, Mick, but when Mick, when Mick Rimmon winning the World Championship, when uh, when you see Ephraim Reyes control the cue ball and never make a mistake, positional play, you think, yeah, he's good. If he'd have grown up in, in the UK, he'd have been a snooker champion. Indeed. In fact, he went down a different road, mm -hmm. but he'd still be a champion. You know, champion's a champion. If I'd have, if I'd, if I'd have been born in, the, in America, I would hope to have been a pool champion. There may be fractional differences. There may be, there may be some qualities that lend themselves better to, to snooker or pool. And straight hitting is very important at snooker, and touch is very important. Good touch is very important at nine ball. But you still have to hit the ball straight at both games. So. But it's, it is fascinating. I'm pleased I played because I. I, I do think um, it would have been easy because a lot of people think, oh, absolutely, Paul's in, you know, it's pockets that the, anybody can play. They don't, they don't understand. So I'm pleased because I know full well that's not the case. Thank you. Okay.